.NET gurus can cook. Welcome to Developer's Kitchen. Today, the Developer's Kitchen travels to Connecticut, where we'll be cooking with Carl Franklin, host of .NET Rocks. He's cooking up his amazing grilled leg of lamb from the .NET Guru's Can Cook Cookbook. Welcome to my kitchen. Well, thank you for having us. We're going to be cooking your recipe yeah. in our cookbook, Amazing Grilled Leg of Lamb. It is pretty amazing. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. So we went to the grocery store before. I called in an order uh, of an eight pound butterfly leg of lamb. They didn't get the word butterfly on the phone because he handed me a boned leg of lamb that you saw in the video. So we had him butterfly it, we went around, we got some vegetables and stuff like that, and then uh, we brought it back here, plopped it down on this cutting board, and now we're going to start. So the first thing I need to do is take off this layer of fat. Um, this is a really nice butterfly, and a butterfly is basically taking the bone out. Well, that's and, I was going to ask you, why do you have a butterfly? Does yeah, that help you, a cook even? It does, exactly right. I mean, first of all, the bone, nobody eats the bone, so it's got to come off the bone eventually. And second of all, the butterflying makes it like a flat piece of meat that will cook evenly on the grill. So, but there's a lot of fat here and you know, you want to take a lot of this off. Some fat is good for flavor. Little you're, flavor. Yeah, you're obviously going to leave some on, but that's what we're going to do right now. And when you remove fat, uh, you got to be very careful because you need to poke the uh, very sharp knife inside the fat and right below the layer where it touches the meat and sometimes you might get a little meat on it like that but that's really okay you want to just get it as close as you can and just start slicing Oh, that looks pretty lean. Yep. Now I see the silver skin on there. Are you gonna leave it on? You're gonna take it off? Yeah, this part right here, glad you mentioned that. This is a very tough membrane right here uh, called silver skin. And you can leave it on. There's really no harm in leaving it on. But the problem is then you punt the problem down the road to your diners and they probably will curse you for leaving it on because it's very tough. It doesn't even cut well with a steak knife. You gotta use a very sharp knife to just get under that membrane and, and, and cut it right off. So that's that's what I'm doing now. Oh, great. Now you mentioned we know your .NET Rocks. Can you tell us a little bit about .NET Rocks? Sure, well, um, it's essentially a podcast for .NET developers and topics range from, you know, standard .NET topics to anything that .NET developers would be interested in. Um, Richard Campbell, my, uh, my co-host and I, we talk to people at Microsoft, we talk to people outside Microsoft, and we've been doing it since 2002. So before podcasting was a thing. So we have 688 shows in the archive as of this recording. Well, I know you're not new. I'm pretty sure all of our viewers know all about you. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna end up with lots of smaller pieces, like here's one piece, some really small pieces, you know, like this. That's totally okay, it's better to get the fat out and uh, and cut them up into smaller pieces because you're going to grill as long as it doesn't fall into your grill, you know it's going to be okay. So the next step. What's the next step? Brining. Brining is the secret to making meat of all kinds taste wonderful. It's essentially salt and water, and you soak the meat in salt and water, salt water, for at least an hour, two hours, overnight, whatever. But the best part about it is any kind of spice or flavor that you want to add, you can go nuts with. Now me, for lamb, it's all about garlic and rosemary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pot right here and fill it with water. Well, I'm not going to fill it, actually. I'm only going to put up to here or so, maybe four or five inches of water. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going <laughs> to put, put the lamb in the water first and just enough to cover it because essentially the more water you have in there the uh, you know the 
the more seasoning you have to add to get it salty and all that stuff. Okay. I'm just gonna wash my hands over here. Carl, I grew up eating some lamb. I think it was mutton, and it was really, really gamey tasting, and I didn't like it. Yeah. The thing about mutton and, and lamb in general is that it has to be very fresh, and you also have to get those really solid pieces of fat out, because that's where that real gamey flavor comes from. So that's why we and put mutton, all those little pockets out. Yeah. And mutton as well is just more gamey than lamb, uh, than just a leg of lamb. So. You got some garlic salt, and you know I measure carefully. <laughs> that's that's pretty good. Jesus. Don't feel like you're gonna put in too much salt because honestly, it washes out of the meat. Um, a good guideline is maybe half a cup for every quart of uh, water. Um, and then I'm just taking some rosemary sprigs here. Rosemary goes great with lamb. Rosemary I mean, that's like and a lamb. Classic. Are, are so great together. You can't have one without the other. So we're gonna put it in the fridge for about three or four hours, and when we come back, we'll get to grilling. Hold on. That smells great. That's the <laughs> nice smell there, huh? Smell that with the garlic, huh? Okay, I'm taking it. <laughs> <laughs> the Developer's Kitchen is brought to you by Spread.net from Grape City Power Tools. So Carl. Yeah, Richard. You ever embed Excel into an application? Oh, you know, that's right up there with sticking ice picks in my ears. Nice. Because your end users have to have the right version of Office and all of that stuff. Yeah. And it has that extra layer of dependency. What I want is just a way to take all that Excel goodness and plop it right into my .NET application. Well, you reminded me of Farpoint Spread from the old days. 20 years ago, yeah, I no used kidding. Farpoint Spread. But now, of course, it's Grape City Power Tools spread. And now, you know, they have this uh, version that's both for ASP.NET and for Windows Forms in one package. Nice. It's two different controls, obviously, but it's one package. So you, bought you don't one, have to. You bought the other. That's right. Spread.net from Grape City Power Tools. Smarter components for smarter developers. So we have the lamb and the brine. Yes. Now, side dishes, what kind of side dishes you like with this? The side dishes I'm gonna make tonight are purple mashed potatoes. Purple mashed potatoes? Purple mashed potatoes. These yeah, are- food coloring? You know, I, I wish Richard was here, because <laughs> he could tell you all about, and I ran out of scotch. What? Hey, hey I, dude, Richard! I, I come bearing scotch. Also, I've done that rocks. <laughs> welcome! Yeah. Well, my friend. Yeah, welcome to my home. I have a fine Speyside Glen Morangi here for you. Glen Morangi, Speyside. Mm hmm. From the southern edge of Dufftown, where they make very fine scotch. You are like all knowledgeable about scotch and food. Tell us what is the deal with purple potatoes? Well, funny you should mention the purple potato because the original potatoes were purple. These are Peruvian potatoes, which is where the potato comes from. Uh huh. And there are over 30 species of potato that come per from Peru alone. But this is the popular one because it's purple. Mm. But if you go to Peru, and I recommend you do, they will serve you an appetizer, literally 12 different kinds of potato on it. Wow. And they're all, oh. and they're served cold. They've all got a different texture to them. Some are a little mealier, some are a little waxier. So some potato's are a not a potato? Potato's a funny thing. Idaho and the... Now that's a very refined, particular species of potato, carefully engineered by man to be large with a heavy French casing fries. on it and yeah. so forth. Exactly. The, the jacket potato, the Yukon Gold makes great uh, French Mashed fries. Potatoes. But mm -hmm. this is much closer to what potatoes were in the beginning. Kids love this. And just my kids because love of the color. purple mashed potatoes. How can you go wrong? It's just awesome. Yeah. Dude, thanks. My pleasure. Dot net rocks. It certainly does. So what we've done is we've diced a whole bunch of these purple potatoes, as you can see right here. Um, I just peeled them, cut them like so. Let me move so this out of the way. So that's a pretty fine dice, not a thick dice. Uh, it's not bad. Boiling. I basically cut them lengthwise three times, put them down on the on the cutting board like this. Oh, that is purple all the way through. All right, so there's the water. Great. Turn on the gas. Garlic is featured prominently in all of my dishes. Well, garlic's really good for you. It is. I'm just using garlic salt in the water. We're gonna use real garlic in the beans, but there's a special way that you can do that so you don't burn the garlic. So this is essentially gonna go 
Uh, we're just gonna let that boil. Let for, that boil. You know, okay. uh, 10, 15 minutes of boiling time for the purple ones. You want to let them go a good 15 so they get nice and soft. These uh, beans, Russ Festino actually snipped. Yay. He's over there. <laughs> he just snipped the ends off. Here he is. Oh, another I'm special guest. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Carl. Hey. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, I used to snip beans when I was a kid for my mom in the garden, you know? So yeah. I had an experience with that. And look, at, look that. at that. Aren't they beautiful? Beautiful. Sometimes the, the ones that are freestanding in the grocery store aren't as good as the kind you can get in a bag. Yeah. You just got to look and see what's better. Sometimes the bag is a little more expensive, but they're better quality. I think I ate half of them, though, when I was cleaning <laughs> them. They're, they're well, just, yeah, I got a slap in your hand. Yeah. We need those. <laughs> Come on, Russ, for dinner. All right. Now so, I'm cooking those. You know, I measure everything carefully, so, you know, some butter. That's my kind of eating. So, some butter. All right, right in the pan. You want to saute these till they're uh, just al dente. Yeah, or? al dente, exactly. Take some garlic. Show you a little trick that I learned about garlic, because you know that's kind of a pain to work with, right? You got to cut it and chop it and all that stuff. Watch this. Just take one of these cloves like this, put it down on your cutting board, your palm, press it. Instant smashed garlic. Look at that, and it comes nice right out. I'll just give these a little stir to get them going there, get them all happy. Now I'm not gonna put any seasoning in these until later, until they soften up a little bit. You wanna, uh, to, to mash the garlic here, you wanna take a, a very large knife and just mash it like this. All right, so my beans are a bit softer now and you can, they're starting to brown. Oh, they're looking great. So this is when I'm gonna add the garlic. And That's just, like a quarter cup of garlic. That's a lot of garlic. That's my kind of cooking. Yeah, absolutely. And a little kosher salt. You know, a couple of pinches, something like that. And now you're only gonna saute this again for three, three minutes tops. You might want to check that, Donnie. The Developer's Kitchen is brought to you by Spread.net from Grape City Power Tools. Showcasing database figures in a grid while making it look attractive is only half the path. You need a component that allows you to present your data in a meaningful, controlled, and interactive way. Spread from Grape City Power Tools makes it simple. Spread is the world's best-selling .NET spreadsheet technology with unmatched customization, performance, and quality. Experience Spread from Grape City Power Tools yourself. Go to gcpowertools.com and download your free evaluation copy today. So Carl, he's been marinating for us. Four hours now. Four hours in the fridge. Nice, yeah. and I see your grill. You guys set up yeah. for indirect heating. Yes, so what I've got is I got a four burner grill. I turn two, the two on one side on high, and I leave the other two off, and I let it get up to about, I don't know, 400 degrees or so, 20 minutes, something like that. You could turn them all on and let it go for 10 minutes. So low what and I, slow. Yeah, low and slow. That's what barbecue's all about. Now lamb, you know, can be kind of tough. So that's why we want to do it kind of slow. Oh, those look great. So I basically patted these down with, uh, you know, with paper towel, and I'm just going to take them and I'm put them on the side with the indirect heat, right on the grill. And you can see that I got the rosemary right on there as well. Once they're on the heat, I'm going to sprinkle a little adobo on them. For a five pound piece of meat, it's about 90 minutes is what is okay. general cooking time. After 15 minutes, probably, you want to turn it so that the side that's away from the heat is now facing the heat, okay? And that, that just makes it even out a little bit more. 15 more minutes, flip it, 15 more minutes, do it again, and just keep doing that. But what I'm going to do is essentially just drop these rosemary sprigs right down into the flame. Wow. And you know, they're gonna, they're gonna smoke. They're gonna catch on fire. So when it reaches 125 degrees inside, that's time to take it off and let it rest. 
and you always got to let it rest. Cover it with foil, let it rest for five or ten minutes before you cut into it. So Carl, your potatoes are looking pretty good. Yeah, they're they're done. They've been boiling for a good 15 minutes. So what kind of flavoring is going to add to this? Yeah, so what we're going to do is see they already have a little garlic, salt. Yeah, well, we boiled them in. Yep, we boiled them in. Oh, hold on. Go ahead. So we boiled oh, the them an extra nice. long time, so they're a little mushy, but you got to do that with the purple potatoes because they get a little waxy. So what we're going to do is a little half and half. Just, you know, I measure things carefully, so. <laughs> just like that. A little butter, because we got to have some butter. Oh, uh, butters. Got to have, have that butter. A little more butter. A little celery salt. Gives it a nice little flavor. Garlic powder and onion powder. A little hit of each. Just nice to add some flavor in there. A tablespoon of sour cream. Okay, maybe two tablespoons. So you're gonna whip these. I'm gonna whip them up. If you notice a purple thing here, it's because my girlfriend really loves the color purple. So purple potatoes, purple spatula. Purple rain. Purple rain, purple rain. Purple half and half. Just saying. I ah. see the theme going on here. We also want a little black pepper. The black pepper is good. All right, let me taste it. How does it taste? That's really good. Yeah. That's really, really you good. You can taste the celery salt. Yeah, I can taste it. Sour the, cream. Yep. A little onion powder. A little the garlic. Oh, just, just too good. And boiling the potatoes and the spice has really made a huge difference. Because you put all the flavors directly in the potatoes as you're boiling them. Yeah, so you, you don't can, need much extra spices at the end. Yeah, you sense a theme here with the brining yeah. and the boiling and salt, salted garlic the flavors. Water. Yeah. Natural flavors coming out. It's good. Wow, that's delicious. Yeah, that's good stuff. So now it's time to carve up the lamb. I uh, flipped it just like I said I was going to, and then I turned it one more time. And now you get that wow. nice oh, brown oh. crust on there. The rosemary. Yeah, the rosemary's all crusty wow. and stuff. It's in the original position that it was. So now I gotta check to make sure that it's about 120 to 125 degrees. Look at oh, that, that folks. Looks, that looks great. Yeah, all right, let's take it in under the real light and you'll, you'll see it uh, a little bit better. Ah, and that's a nice medium. Now here's the 64-bit question. <laughs> this I've been waiting for all day How long. How is this freaking lamb? .NET Gurs can cook. They can cook. <laughs> For all of the recipes featured on the Developer's Kitchen, go to gcpowertools.com cookbook and find out how to get your own copy of .NET Guru's Can Cook.